Good evening. Tonight, a mother and daughter are reunited on this broadcast, and you'll see it here first. The circumstances, safe to say, are unique. Alice Marie Johnson, you see her here rushing into the arms of relatives, was released after 21 years in prison. She was sentenced to life for a first-time nonviolent federal drug conviction, and you'll hear from her momentarily. Today, in the sixth act of executive clemency of his administration, President Trump commuted her sentence. It came after Kim Kardashian West lobbied the president on her behalf, and as in many of the pardons and commutations the president has issued or is contemplating, it is part of a larger debate, only some of which has to do with the merits of Ms. Johnson's case, her sentencing, or the very real joy that she and her family are obviously now feeling. So in a moment, we'll talk more about that, about how this president is exercising his power to grant pardons and commute sentences. But first, my conversation a short time ago with Alice Marie Johnson on the phone and her daughter, Tritessa. Alice, how, how do you feel? You just got out a short time ago. Oh, my goodness, I feel, I'm so happy, but it's so overwhelming to me to be able to just hug my family. Alice, when did you first learn, and how did you learn um, that you were going to get out? My uh, case manager, Mr. Holler, called me back to uh, the unit team. I knew I had an attorney call, but when I... When the attorneys came on, I heard Kim Kardashian's West voice, and Kim told, gave me the news. And I started screaming. I, it was just too much. Did you know that she was going to go to the White House and, and plead your case? Yes, I knew that she, she was going on my birthday. Tritessa, I mean, this just must be one of the most incredible days for you. I wonder, did you ever think after 21 years you'd, you'd see your mom released from prison? Well, I always had hope that she'd be released, but... Uh, I didn't know when I woke up this morning that today was today, for sure. <laughs> Alice, does it feel strange to, to be out? Yes, I have not been in a car without handcuffs in almost 22 years. And, and have you had a chance to talk to each other? To Tritessa? Yes. Yes, I spoke with her sh uh, shortly uh, with the attorneys. Well, I don't know if you, if you... Tritessa, if you want to use this opportunity, if there's anything you want to say to your mom... Hi, Mom. I'm so glad to see you out. I'm looking at the video of you <laughs> running out. Uh, I wish I could have been there. Uh, you were there with me. I, I always there. imagined myself as being there, So, but I'm, I'm so glad to see, whether I'm there or not, I'm so glad to see that you got out today. Oh, I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm excited I'm, to see you. I tell you, that was, a, that was the best sight I believe I've ever seen in my life was to see my family out here today. I feel like I was flying, not running. And Alice, you said uh, you were saying uh, that, that your daughter, though she wasn't there, she was there in spirit? Yes. I saw her in the faces of my other relatives. She was right there with me in my heart. What, do you uh, know what you're going to do now, Alice? I mean, it, it's, uh, I know you, you were, everybody says you were a, a model prisoner, that you worked uh, incredibly hard to, to help others. Wh what do you want to do now? Well, I want to, in terms of work, I already have a job secured, but I really want to work hard with this, uh, with changing things in our criminal justice system. And you probably already know I love to write. So I don't know what kind of theater is taking place. I'd love to get that started up there. Did you lose hope at some point that, that this day might not come? Well, honestly, there were some times that I felt like losing hope. Well, one of the times was when I walked up to the, when I walked up with another person that received clemency, and I thought my name was on the list, and that was a pretty rough day for me. But after that, my daughter, my daughter Katina always tells me that I remind her of a phoenix. So that day, I tell you the truth, Anderson, I'm from all the way out. Mm. And I guess in order to be a phoenix, I had to rise from those ashes. So since then, I've been going strong. That was the worst day. Well, you sure have risen today. Um, is there anything you want to say to the president, to, to Kim Kardashian West, and all the others who have been uh, fighting for you? Well, I, 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 want, I want to say to President Trump, I am going to make you proud that you gave me this second chance in life, and I will not disappoint the American public or the world who has so much faith in me. All I can say is thank you, President Trump. And, and I love you, President Trump. Thank you. And I want to tell Kim, my war angel, that you never gave up on me. You never gave up your fight. You were relentless.
pointless, and it has paid off beautifully for me and my family on this day. Tratessa, what do you want people to know about your mom? She's a, a kind person and a generous person, and um, I'm, I'm thankful that people will get to know her outside of being in prison, so, and we'll get to, to be able to reconnect with her, but um, that she's, I want people to know that she's genuine. What you see is what you get. This isn't an act. Well, Tratessa, uh, Alice, I'm, I'm so happy for, for both of you, and Alice, I just wish you the best and uh, can't wait to see uh, what you do moving forward. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you, Addison. Thank you. I love you, Tratessa. I love you too, Mama. Can't wait to see you. So, so I'm heading home. We're back on the road. <laughs> Alice, thank you. And Tratessa, thank you so, so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome, thank you, Anderson. Thank you. Amazing to hear the joy in her voice, obviously. More now uh, on the bigger debate that this is now a part of and why the president has chosen to lean so heavily so early in his administration on the privilege of the office. CNN has exclusively learned that the White House has now done the paperwork needed to pardon at least 30 people. Joining us now is CNN political analyst Maggie Haberman. She is, of course, also notably a White House correspondent for The New York Times. Uh, first of all, I mean, Maggie, just an extraordinary thing to hear Alice mm -hmm. Uh, shortly after getting out of prison, uh, just to the, to the joy of being reunited with her family and, and yeah. the, considering her, her new life and what that must feel like for the president of the United States to have this power. The, the pardons thus far seem to fall into two categories, conservative political figures or people like Ms. Johnson who were flagged to the president by, by well-known people, by celebrities. Is that how you expect things to continue? Because again, CNN's reporting the White House is prepping pardons for at least 30 people. Right. I, I, I actually think there's going to be a change in how this goes, or at least you can anticipate a change, because as we know with this president, when we think that there's a hard and fast way he's going to go ahead with something, uh, he, he takes a diversion. Uh, I do think the celebrity aspect is a big piece of this. I would not uh, diminish that. However, the component where it is people who have political connections, and also I'd create a third bucket, which is people who uh, have cases that were involved with prosecutors or investigators uh, who he wants to get back at. Uh, you know, you saw a, a case involving a Southern District prosecution uh, where he talked about doing a pardon. Martha Stewart was a person that he mused about, and that's a celebrity connection. Rob Lagojevich was on The Apprentice. Uh, I think this is one of the few powers the president has discovered that he has that is just unadulterated, essentially. It is just up to him. There are processes that are supposed to take place. Um, obviously, Ms. Johnson's case had been uh, through the process repeatedly and denied by the Obama administration. The president has decided to go around the process and do it himself, and that's going to create a whole other question about, um, you know, uh, criminal justice reform and how this goes. But I do think that he is enjoying the ability to essentially wave a wand and make this happen. I mean, it is basically for a president as close to being a king as an American president yes. can get. The president uh, you know, can't even declare war, only Congress can do that. Uh, you're not surprised that he's drawn to his pardon power, and I'm wondering how much it has to do with frustration on working with Congress and, and just general frustration. I, that, is a, that is a real part of it. I mean, look, there's obviously the question of the fact that there is an open investigation um, that relates to him, that relates to his family. Um, there are people who are pleading guilty, uh, who he certainly would want to make aware that a pardon could be in the offing, and there is some sense by his supporters that that's what's happening here. I think that's an aspect of it in some cases, but I mostly think that he has been very, very stymied by the limits on executive power that he has discovered. I think that he didn't really understand the way the presidency works. He thought it would be much more like a local party boss. And I think this is something where he can just, you know, say boom, and it happens. And the fact, I mean, the president has boasted he can pardon himself, which constitutional law experts largely disagree with, say nothing of political fallout that, that would bring. Um, I mean, you raised the, the point of, with some pardons, he's sending a message to others who, mm -hmm you know, maybe facing criminal charges or, or you, know, uh, you know, thinking about flipping. Right. I, I, it's hard to ignore that aspect of it, right? And, and uh, my colleagues and I at the Times had reported that his former lead lawyer, John Dowd, had had conversations with some of the people involved in the special counsel case uh, about the possibility of a, of a pardon down the road. Uh, these are people who have not 
uh, pleaded guilty. There, there has not been any uh, resolution in terms of their cases. And so that was pretty notable. Um, I don't think you can avoid that or ignore that, but I really do not think that's the only thing at play here. Yeah, Maggie Haberman, appreciate it. Thanks very much.